welcome guys i am finally back and i am going to tell y'all my labor and delivery story it's been a long time coming it's actually only been a month um i want to give myself time for me and baby to get acclimated with each other so i'm gonna go ahead and tell y'all my labor and delivery story without further ado during a pandemic <laughs> Okay, let's start. Let's go back to April. So in April, I woke up one morning and I was bleeding and I ended up having to go to the emergency room. Um, this was when the pandemic kind of first started. We we're kind of on lockdown then. Um, we've been on lockdown since March, but you know, it, it was like the first week in April. I ended up having to go to the hospital. I was like 33 weeks then and they couldn't figure out what was going on. My whole family's like, you're probably gonna have the baby today. They're gonna induce you if you're bleeding. That's what they normally do. And, you know, I'm thinking to myself, like, I don't think it's that serious. Like, please don't, you know, let me have this baby early because one, it's COVID-19. And if he has to go into the NICU, like, they are very, very strict with visitation. And I don't want a hospital to just have my baby without me being able to see him more than an hour a day. You know, that was like kind of the restrictions at the time. And I'm just like, I just don't trust my baby just being at a hospital without me being able to see him. So I was like praying like, Lord, please don't let me have this baby today. So uh, long story short, I ended up having like a bladder infection, bladder or kidney infection. They couldn't figure out which one it was. I think it was a kidney infection. I mean, they're about the same thing, the same type of symptoms. So I was put on bed rest um, until my next appointment that next week. So, um, at that appointment that next week from this uh infection i had been having contractions i had been taking medicine for it but i was still having contractions so these contractions led to me you know kind of dilating a little bit i was like half a centimeter contracting 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 um nothing consistent enough to come in so i started coming in every week to uh be checked or whatever and so finally the doctor like two weeks prior he was like okay we're gonna go ahead and put it in the system that you're gonna be induced we're gonna go ahead and get it scheduled like your name is gonna be on the list to be induced we're just gonna go ahead and do it and I'm like cool go ahead and put me on the list that's fine thank you like I'm excited blah 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 so the week before I'm scheduled to go to my last doctor's appointment to like set in stone that I'm being induced or whatever my grandfather dies that Monday stop contracting I didn't have contractions anymore that entire week like that entire week I didn't have any more contractions so when I go to the doctor my grandfather died that Monday we had a funeral that Wednesday and then that Friday I went to the doctor doctor is like okay you definitely stopped contracting because you haven't dilated any more than you were the last week you know but it's fine we're just gonna go ahead and schedule you hospitals when they schedule you they give you a date and a time to come to the hospital hey monday at 6 a.m you need to be here versus this particular hospital they have the charge nurses call you and tell you when to come in uh when a bed is available and you know the doctors kind of give you a time frame like hey sunday morning be expecting a call that's about as much as you'll get from the doctors so I'm like, okay, cool. My name's on the list. I'm excited. Yeah, I'm gonna have a baby, you know. Woo! Baby's coming. They were like, but in order for you to be induced this weekend, you have to go get a COVID test. So I'm like, why do I have to get a COVID test? I don't have any symptoms. Like, y'all just checked my temperature. Y'all just checked all this stuff. Like, why do I have to have a COVID test? And they're like, well, it's for precautions. We just want to make sure that if you're going in that, you know, not only are you protected, baby protected, but our staff is protected as well. So I'm just like, okay, it can't be that bad, right? So I was like, where do I go? So they initially told me, well, you need to go through um, drive through testing, which is like two streets over. Go to the drive through testing, you know, tell them that you're going to have be induced on Sunday, blah, blah, blah. And they'll go ahead and do it so it was a friday mind you and i was like are you gonna get the test results fast enough she was like yeah don't worry about it we'll have the test results so i'm like okay so i drive over a couple streets over get to the drive through test and they were like when are you being induced i was like sunday and they were like oh no oh no 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 we can't do the test in here you have to go to an actual on-site facility you can't do the drive through because you need rapid results and we don't do rapid results it takes three days here versus you need one in like a day so you're gonna have to go to this other building so he gives me the address to this building literally 
this facility was two floors down from the floor that I just came from in my doctor's office. So my doctor's office was clueless that if you were getting induced or having some type of surgery like in less than three days that there was a facility on site in the building you just had to go three floors down to do it. So that's how new the testing situation was that they had just changed it and the doctors didn't even know what to tell them. So I go to the facility and I wait for like an hour for them to test me because I'm like a walk-in or whatever. Call my name and the lady was like, yeah, so this is how the test works. We're gonna take a, we're gonna take a swab and stick it up both your nostrils for 10 seconds at a time. And so I was just like, okay, sticking a swab up my nostril, you know. So lady finally comes back after I'm waiting an additional like 15, 20 minutes after I already waited an hour. Lady finally comes in with her smock on. She has this little uh, plastic cover on her face. Like she finally comes in and she pulls out this fucking stick it was not a swab it was like this long ass metal rod look like i keep calling it a needle because that's what it reminded me of because it was like a long ass metal rod and it had like the thinnest piece of like swab on the end i'm like this is a full-fledged needle i was like y'all are not about to stick that up i know she was like we have to stick it up your nose or we can't you know you can't be scheduled if you don't have your test results so I'm just like, oh my God, like freaking out. I'm just like, okay, just give me a second. Let me take a few couple, you know, deep breaths and get prepared for you to like violate my nose with this fucking needle. The lady comes up, she sticks the needle up my nose. And when I say up my nose, I'm talking about like, I can feel it up here. Like she was touching my brain. And so she was counting one, two, three, four. And I'm like, oh my God, like I'm not screaming, but I'm just sitting there like, like oh my god hurry up okay she swirls it around pulls it out and i'm like i don't think that you're gonna be able to do this other nostril like you're gonna have to give me a break there's no way in the fuck i'm gonna let you do that again like you're gonna have to give me some time and the lady's like don't take your time we've already done it she's like i just need to do this next nose and you're done like you're done and then you're scheduled like you don't have to worry about anything so i'm just like she sticks it up there and of course I feel it on this side now she's counting one two three four and I'm just like oh my god that was the longest 10 seconds of my life I'm like oh my god hurry up so she swirls it around she pulls it out and so I'm like okay so how will I know and she was like okay so basically we're so backed up with tests she was like if you don't receive a call that's a good thing that means that you don't have it and that's like because she's like we're really it's the weekend we're really only focusing on people who are positive she's like if you don't get a call by tomorrow saying that you got it you probably don't have it so i'm like okay you know so saturday comes around i didn't get a call so i'm like i'm assuming i don't have it so sunday comes and my doctor had already told me that they're going to be calling you sunday morning you know this is before i knew that uh it's not this is before I knew some things about their scheduling like I said they call you based on what the doctor you know is telling me so 9 a.m. rolls around 10 a.m. 11 12 4 p.m. nobody's called me so at 5 o'clock I'm like I'm gonna just call and see what's going on I'm like hey I'm calling up there I'm supposed to be induced today like I was supposed to be induced this morning like I was supposed to be there this morning like what exactly is going on I'm confused and so the charge nurse is like, oh no, because this is elective and not an emergency like C-section or something, like there's a list of people ahead of you. So we could call you anytime today. Like we can call you at 3 a.m. I was like, so if y'all call me at 3 a.m., that means that I gotta get up out of my bed at 3 a.m. to come to y'all. And she was like, yeah, just leave your phone on. Just leave your phone on and on ring or whatever. And so I'm just like, so you mean to tell me something that was technically scheduled two weeks ago, there's that many people in front of me from two weeks ago? And she was like, yeah, unfortunately. She was like, but don't worry, we should be calling you tonight. You know, don't worry, we're gonna call you tonight. So of course now I'm kind of irritated because it's been a rough pregnancy and I'm ready to get this over with. Like I'm done with this pregnancy. I want baby out. Like all this, I gotta wait on y'all to call me bullshit. It, it pissed me off, like I was pissed. So of course when you're anxious like that, you're not gonna get any sleep. So, you know, after five o'clock, you know, nine o'clock rolls around, 10 o'clock rolls around, midnight rolls around, 6 a.m. rolls around. And so I'm like, okay, I'm gonna wait till 7 a.m. and I'm gonna call them again and see what the fuck is going on. Cause at this point it's Monday. It's not even Sunday anymore, it's Monday. 
So I call again and the charge nurse is like, oh my God, you know, we're just really backed up. We don't have any beds, blah, blah, blah. And I'm getting irritated. I'm like, how do y'all not have any beds and this is scheduled? When something is scheduled, you're supposed to have a bed. I, don't, I wasn't understanding why they didn't have a bed for me. Like I was getting super, super, super pissed. And I was like, okay. She's like, we're going to call you. Don't worry. We're going to call you, blah, blah, blah. So... I'm just sitting here irritated. I'm like crying. I'm like, oh my God, like these people won't call me and they don't understand how horrible this pregnancy has been. It's been terrible. Like, so finally 9 a.m. she calls and she's like, okay, we have a bed available. Be here by 11. Mind you, it wasn't even 9 a.m. It was like 9.45 and it takes me an hour to get there from my house. So I'm calling my dad because husband's at work, mom's at work, closest person who is not working is my dad. So I'm like, dad, they want me to come in at 11 and you're supposed to be watching the kids. Like, can you please just like come right now and you know, take me. So he's like, yeah, yeah, I'll take you. You know, my dad doesn't live too far. He lives technically like 30 minutes away, but he got here in like 10 minutes. So I'm like getting in the car. I'm like, I'm gonna get the kids breakfast real quick before, you know, he gets here and he finally gets here and I got my bags. And I'm just happy. And I'm just like, oh my God, I'm just excited. Like, yay, today is the day. Call everybody, call my husband. Like, hey, I'm headed to the hospital. You know, once I get there, you know, finish your, you know, he drives trucks. So I'm like, finish your route, whatever you got to do. I'm going to the hospital, baby. Like, it's time. So I get to the hospital at 11 a.m. They call me on back. They got my room ready. Like, it's a really, really nice room. I put my stuff down. The nurses come in and they're like, hey, what's your birth plan? And my birth plan is let's have a baby. Like, I don't have a plan. Just get him out. I don't care how, I don't care how you do it. Just, just do it. So I'm sitting there and I'm waiting for like um, the midwife from my doctor's office to come in. They were like, the midwife is going to come in and, you know, we're going to check you real quick and see how dilated you are, blah, blah, blah. So the midwife comes in and she's like, okay, so um, you haven't really dilated much. So uh, and your cervix is still kind of it's soft, but it's not soft as we need it to be. So we're going to give you something called Cervidil. Cervidil is something that softens your cervix or whatever. And a lot of times when it softens your cervix, it'll send you right on into labor. And so she's like, so we're going to give you Cervidil. I'm like, okay, so hit me with the Cervidil. Like, hit me with it. So for those who don't know, Cervidil is like this long little tampon, basically, string that they insert into your vagina and it kind of hangs out there. Like, it literally hangs out. And um, it softens your cervix. So I'm like, okay, go ahead and hit me with the Cervidil. And she's like, um, yeah, we're going to hit you with the Cervidil at 5 o'clock this afternoon. And I'm like, why am I here at 11 a.m. if y'all are not going to even start doing anything until 5 p.m.? Like, I'm getting irritated again. I'm like, bro, they're talking about they're not going to do anything until 5 o'clock. And so, of course, my husband's like, well, I'll be off work. I'll be on my way. You know, just relax. You know, take advantage of whatever they're trying to help you with. Husband gets there and we're just sitting there like giggling and laughing. He kind of calmed me down. And I'm just like, okay, well, he's coming regardless. So 5 o'clock finally comes and they insert the server deal. And immediately, like an hour later, I started having contractions, like back to back. And I was like, okay, okay, it's working. Like, can y'all take it out now? Like, I'm clearly in labor. And they're like, no, it has to stay in for 12 hours. So I literally had to keep that server deal in from 5 p.m. to 5 a.m. Like, the whole night. So the night was kind of uncomfortable. My contractions um, started getting progressive, but not progressive enough for me to actually be considered ready to push or anything. So through the night, I keep having to wake up to pee. I'm sitting here like I'm exhausted. So when I finally, like maybe at like 10, 11 o'clock at night, I finally started like getting sleepy. And from that point, there was a nurse in my room every like five to 10 minutes because the baby, which is my baby Chase, Chase Maximilian, the baby was moving around so much that he kept getting off the monitor and they thought that he was in distress. They literally kept turning me over. They kept changing the position of the um, contraction in the in the baby monitor. They, they did everything they could and he literally was moving away from wherever they moved it because he didn't want to be touched. He didn't want to be bothered. So I really didn't get much sleep because he did not want these objects on him. Uh, yeah, so they just basically thought that he was in distress the whole entire night. So they ran in and out like literally every five to 10 minutes. So I really wasn't getting any sleep. Finally, 5 a.m. rolls around and it's time to take the server deal out. So I went from being like, I think I was like one and a half centimeters to almost five centimeters. So they're like, okay, you're doing really good. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and give you the Pertocin, which is what jumpstarts the labor. We're gonna go ahead and give you Pertocin 
and go from there which I had already started contractions or whatever um so it should have worked super super fast like they were expecting me to just have the baby that morning so they give me the Pitocin or whatever and the contractions are getting progressively worse and I'm like oh my god like it's kind of hurting a little bit but I want it to hurt because I want it to pro progress the labor um so eventually I couldn't take it anymore and they were like okay do you you know you're at a six almost seven do you want to go ahead and get uh the epidural but cool give me the epidural so the epidural kind of starts it up a little bit too I don't know how normally the epidural slows it down but it didn't so I started to progress so the nurse comes in she's like okay so you're progressing a little bit more we're gonna go ahead and give you a peanut ball so basically a peanut ball is this big ball and it's shaped like a peanut like literally like a peanut like a big um you know how you have the yoga balls is a peanut ball that you put between your legs so they laid me on my side they put the peanut ball in between my legs to help you know me progress a little bit further uh, after they gave me the epidural after so many like maybe an hour or so they decided to break my water so when my water broke all my fluids came out and they thought okay that's definitely gonna kick start it like she'll be good so at this point I'm kind of able to sleep because I've had the epidural so I'm like on and off sleeping when they come in I'm like I'm good they're checking me they're checking my vitals blah 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 and so baby is not dropping down he decides that he wants to go back up so uh, when you're pregnant when you're when you know that you're ready to like have the baby the baby drops down into your you like pretty far into your uterus like it, it's a like, tough tough pressure he had been dropped for weeks but for whatever reason the day of the delivery he decided that he wants to go back up so the doctor's like okay baby's not dropping down so that's slowing down the process like you're not dilating as much as you were earlier because he's went back up into the uterus so there's no pressure to have you dilate even further so they're like okay we're gonna rehydrate you or whatever so they basically took some fluid they put something in my vagina to like put fluids back in my stomach to kind of get him kind of like a water slide like okay we're gonna get him to come back down if we put more fluids in there because the fluids are out and now he's stuck up there we need him to come back down so they put the fluids you know back in me or whatever I don't know if I'm saying the terms right I'm not a nurse I'm just going based off of my perception and what I remember and so the epidural still going and I started feeling contractions even harder and she was like um you want to get one more shot of epidural before it's time for you to go into labor because they they you know they press a little button to have more medicine come into your body and at this point I'm like okay I've been in labor since basically five o'clock yesterday like you know I, I think I'll be okay without the epidural because I know if I actually start to feel contractions it'll speed the process up I don't know why I do that I don't know why I did that because literally 30 minutes later I started feeling pain 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 and it was just back to back like giving birth natural I remember this feeling I'm just like oh my god like I'm calling the nurse I'm like I think I, I think it's time for me to start pushing so I'm like crying my husband comes over he's like why are you crying I'm like oh my god it hurts so bad like it just hurts it just hurts it just hurts it just hurts and so all these people rush in they're like okay you're ready to push girl you're ready to push and I'm just like I'm like I'm not ready to push I'm ready to throw up so literally I'm like I'm about to throw up I'm about to throw up so my husband like throws the little vomit bags that they had given me earlier and I just started throwing up everywhere I'm just like ah, 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 like throwing up everywhere and I was so embarrassed yeah, I get it they're nurses and they're probably used to that but I was so embarrassed because I'm like I'm literally throwing up everywhere and trying to push out a baby at the same time so finally after I stopped vomiting I was like okay I felt a whole lot better I was like okay I think I'm ready so the lady was like okay on the count of three we're gonna start pushing and so she's just like push and I it was just like giving birth natural all over again that epidural had wore off and I wish I would have took that last shot because I basically gave birth natural to this baby too and I'm just like barely able to push because it's so much pain I'm just like oh my god so finally it was like she was like if you just give me one big one last big push I had been pushing for maybe 15 almost 20 minutes she's like if you just give me one big push like he will come out like just you know so at that point I'm like pushing and I'm screaming I'm like oh my god just come out and so I just feel this gush like he finally comes out because the nurse I guess his sh shoulder got stuck in my vagina or in my birth canal and so she pushed down on my stomach to have him like slide out <laughs> So I have him uh they pushed down on my stomach and it was like the biggest relief like 
I don't know if you've ever been like constipated like really really bad but it just felt like I had been constipated for years and I finally was able to use the bathroom like it was the biggest relief I was like oh my god he's finally here he's crying I'm crying husband's in the corner like scared because he didn't want to you know he experienced a lot with the last birth so he was like I don't want to see that again so he was kind of like in the corner like yay he's here and so baby's in my chest crying or whatever so they take baby away and put him on the thing so they can measure him and see how long he is and weigh him and so I just start like trembling which is normal when you have a baby like especially if you have a baby natural like a little bit so I'm kind of like shaking just like like oh my god like I cannot stop shaking like I like something is you know possibly wrong but I'm like I'm like shaking just Ugh. so the nurse takes my temperature my temperature is 103 which is not normal after you have a baby it is completely normal to have a fever most times after you have a baby especially when you're in labor as long as I was I was in labor a straight up 24 hours um Oh, he was born at 4.30, by the way. So 4.30, he came out. 4.15, they're like, oh my God, you have a fever of 103. Like, 4.19, just like freaking Monsters Inc. They're like, no, baby has to get out of here right now. You probably have COVID. And I'm just like, I don't have COVID. Like, I'm shaking. I'm like, I don't have COVID. Like, y'all just tested me two days ago. I don't have COVID. Like, I, ha I always have a fever after I have my babies. Like, it it's something I do. They was like, well, we're sorry you straight up baby is getting out of here you are quarantined you have to take another covid test you cannot get baby back until you pass that test and i'm just like i just took i'm pissed i'm like i just took this test why i do not have it and they were like that's protocol so they let me hold baby like one more time they're like put your mask on you know say your goodbyes to your baby so of course i'm traumatized because i just gave birth 15 minutes ago and y'all are taking him from me and saying that i can't get him back like until I pass the test and I'm thinking if I don't pass the test and they say that I have COVID like I'm not gonna see him for like two weeks and he's a newborn and so I immediately I'm just like crying I'm just like oh my god like this is just so fucking terrible like have I not been through enough with this pre terrible pregnancy and all the things that I've been through during this pregnancy like have I not been through enough for and I'm just like crying and crying and crying and crying and crying to the point where I'm like hyperventilating crying and, you know they take the baby out I'm just like oh my god and the little older nurse was like I'm gonna take care of him like don't worry he's gonna be just fine we're gonna make sure that he is just fine and I'm just like I don't care I just I don't nobody can take care of him like me you know and so my husband's like you need to stop crying because you're just gonna make it you're gonna make your fever the words I'm like shut the fuck up shut the fuck up if I can stop crying I wouldn't stop crying so Another nurse comes in with that smock and that little plastic thing that I know all too well and she comes in and she pulls that needle out and she inserts it in the first nostril. She wasn't like the other lady though. The other lady actually counted to 10. This lady was not counting and I know she had that freaking needle in my nose longer than fucking 10 seconds. Like I was ready to fight her. So she's sitting here you know swabbing me and I'm just like, <laughs> like crying like crying like I had cried I was like so devastated to the point that when she finished the test I was like non-verbal like I just sat there with tears streaming down my face and they were like talking to me and it was kind of like Charlie Brown or like one of those movies when there's a dramatic like hospital scene and like, asking me questions I'm just sitting there like the number you have dialed has just been changed just... the new number is it was like, meh, 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 meh. It, like, I literally had zoned out. Like, I was that upset. I've never really done that before. So, that was something new for me. But I totally zoned out. I was like, everybody stop fucking talking to me. Like, if they were talking to me, I wasn't answering. I was just staring off into space. Like, so eventually, I don't know how long it took me to kind of come to. Because, you know, that's really dramatic. You have a baby. You've already been in labor 24 hours. They've had to do all this stuff. You have a baby. They take your baby away from you. They have to give you a COVID test. And... You basically gave birth natural so it's just like I don't know how long it was by the time I came to it had to have been a while because when I finally came to and realized okay I just had a baby I'm in the hospital all the nurses were gone and nobody was there but my husband he was just kind of sitting there and I turned to him and I'm like what's going on he was like well you know you were crying like a fool because they had to take the baby they issued a COVID test they were like you know he's like I was trying to tell you to calm down and you got mad at everybody he was like you know you just been sitting here for a while just sitting here staring off into space and I'm just like 
okay have they said anything about my test results he was like no he was like they were saying that your test results he was like they told you all this but i guess you were not listening you're just kind of that pissed that you just kind of zoned out he was like they said that you should get the test results back within you know a few hours and so i'm like the test results aren't going to come back in a few hours like who is doing covid testing that damn fast like on the news they're saying that it takes you know these many days and blah 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 my baby's gonna be gone like it was insane so when i finally calmed down he was like okay i'm gonna go home and check on the kids he was like there's nothing that i can do especially you know with you possibly having covid i'm really not even supposed to be in here with you but you were so upset that you know they let me stay and i'm like okay i'll be fine like if i can't get him back i just can't get him back so i'm just sitting there and i call my best friend Brittany, and i'm just like they took my baby like i'm out of it like i don't know what's going on like i'm just i don't i don't know what's going on i just need somebody to talk to me so she's talking to me and she's like it'll be okay like i'm sure you don't have it you just got tested two days ago like don't worry and i was like well if i do have it they're gonna put me on the COVID floor and i'm gonna be there for two weeks and i was like i'm not gonna be able to see my baby like i wanted to immediately breastfeed this time i breastfed all my children but not the first feeding the first feeding is normally a bottle but i wanted to breastfeed this time I, so he could just automatically be accustomed with breast milk first and so i was just kind of upset so i think it was like eight o'clock at night nurse bust in the room she was like you don't have covid i was like yay yay like give me my baby back like bring him back to me like i don't have it bring him back to me they're like okay we're gonna set up to have the baby come back to you but you did have a blood infection from um your labor we don't know where it came from we don't know if you were just in labor too long we're not quite sure but you ended up with a blood infection and so i'm just like okay what does that mean they were like okay so we have to take blood cultures from you every so many hours for the next 24 hours so we're going to be drawing your blood every so many hours so we can figure out what kind of infection it is so we can go ahead and administer um antibiotics so i'm like okay i was like well i need to use the bathroom or whatever like can i take a shower can i do this they're like no you cannot take a shower until you get into your actual room they was like you can use the bathroom but we're not even supposed to let you out of the bed because of this blood infection like you really supposed to be sitting sitting still or whatever and it was like yeah, your fever is still high so you can't have coverage you can't have this so i'm still sitting here like shivering because it's cold in the hospital room and so i was like okay well you know bring my baby back or whatever so clock rolls around i'm still in the labor and delivery room mind you 10 o'clock rolls around 11 o'clock rolls around and the nurse comes in she was like they haven't brought you your baby back and i'm like no where is he like what the fuck is going on where is my baby like bring me my baby and so she was like okay we're getting ready to switch you to the um to a floor it wasn't the labor regular labor and delivery floor it was like a special unit for people who had like infections and stuff like people who needed extra attention i guess so so she's like okay well, we're gonna go ahead and move you to your new room baby will be there when you get there so i'm packing my stuff up or whatever um they're helping me pack my stuff up because i'm not really allowed to walk and stuff so i'm getting my stuff together so i can transfer to this new room so i go to the new room baby is still not in the room and i'm like where is my baby they're like oh okay 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 the lady is on her way we just called the lady is on her way with your baby don't worry look we still got a couple more blood samples that we need to draw from you anyway because it's been such and such time since the last one blah 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 so i'm like okay so that was like 11 and 12 and then one o'clock rolls around and then 2 a.m rolls around and so i called my nurse and i was like y'all literally have 10 minutes to get my son in this room or it's going to be a problem because y'all told me at eight o'clock that y'all were going to bring him. It is now 2 a.m. and I have not seen him since he has been born. Bring him to me. So 10 minutes a row, but it took them 30 minutes to bring the baby. So of course I'm kind of freaking out because I'm not saying I'm a conspiracy theorist, but it's just like COVID-19 is going around. Y'all just testing me twice for this stupid shit. I'm on a special floor and y'all haven't brought me my son my son has been gone since 4 30 from 4 30 now 4 45 this afternoon to 2 a.m like what are y'all doing with him like what is going on are y'all trying to infect him like i'm not saying that that's what they were doing but of course i just had a baby so i was out of my mind so i'm just like they're like experimenting on my baby like bring my baby back like right now so lady finally brings the baby and he is just so cute and just so chunky faced and i'm just like oh my god my heart is just complete now i can stop like being worried like baby is back baby is back with me i am like super hype i'm like thank you god but he has to be washed as well so the nurses were coming in like every 30 minutes to take him to do stuff and i'm just like can you just do whatever you need to do in the room like i i'm 
have anxiety y'all keep taking him from me and i'm not understanding why y'all keep taking him from me like i get it doctors have their own protocol but i don't have covid and i'm the one with the blood infection he doesn't have anything wrong y'all are just doing blood cultures just to make sure but y'all have already said that there's nothing wrong so like y'all keep taking him out the room so i don't think i got any sleep i think around like 9 a.m. they were like okay so your fever is like basically completely broken your first set of blood cultures came back negative like you're doing really really good on the um, antibiotics like we're gonna go ahead and move you to the regular labor and delivery floor mind you the room that I had was just in was like an old 1995 room like they had wallpaper from 1995 in this fucking room and everything was like yellow I was like oh my god thank you that thank god they're finally moving me from this floor because this floor is scary so they moved me to my regular room or whatever and uh everybody's in and out because i had a fever and because i had to have blood cultures and i had an infection like they were in and out of my room a little bit more than they normally would now anytime you give birth they're in and out the room like every 30 minutes to an hour anyway because that's what they're supposed to do but when you have an infection it's like more like every 10 minutes that they come in like it's a regular nurse the helper nurse um pediatrician and the pediatrician nurse it's like four different people that come into your room like every 10 minutes just to let me check your vitals let me check your blood pressure let me check this and then of course my blood pressure was kind of baby's crying in the background <laughs> they're like let me check your blood pressure let me check this let me check that they had to check it like every 10 minutes like it was insane well i realized that uh i hadn't been able to breastfeed like this is a whole day later and i'm like i haven't breastfed not one time he's been drinking these bottles and I can tell that the bottles are irritating him like this milk it was Similac I freaking hate Similac with a passion I'm more of an infamil mom um nothing against moms who like Similac but I personally for my babies they don't do good on Similac so I can like hear his stomach like trying to process and digest this nasty ass Similac and I'm like okay he's getting restless he is not sleeping he's just fussing and fussing and fussing and fussing and fussing of course when you're in the hospital you really don't have an option but to you know you know they'll give you one regular formula or they'll give you sensitive so they were like well let's try the Similac sensitive or whatever so that wasn't doing too much better and at that point I hadn't had sleep I had probably had 30 minutes of sleep within the last two days so I was exhausted um so the one nurse um the nurse and the and the tech that's what they're called the tech comes in and I'm like, is there any way they have a nursery at this specific hospital? And anytime you tell them to take the baby, that they'll take they'll take the baby. But I wasn't trying to do that because it was a dramatic event. He had been away from me for so long that I just didn't want him to go to the nursery. And so I kind of gave in because I'm like, if I don't get any sleep and he's crying like this, I'm like, I'm gonna lose my mind. Like I've already kind of lost my mind already. I don't want to lose it any further. And so I'm telling the nurse, I'm like. You know he's really upset with this milk it's irritating him i was like is there any way that y'all can take him to the nursery so i can at least get like a quick little hour of sleep because i feel like i'm about to lose my mind and so the nurse is like i mean we can take him but if he continues continues to cry like this we're just gonna bring him back and so the technician was kind of looking at her like that's not how we do things here like this particular nurse was very very odd um I'll go into that in a minute but the tech was kind of looking at her like I can't believe you just told this lady that so the tech herself she was like listen I'm gonna make my rounds with my other babies and I'm going to come back and get him for you and I was like please thank you like oh my god thank you so you know a few minutes like 30 minutes and went by and she actually came back and i'm thinking she's going to take the baby to the nursery she did not take the baby to the nursery she literally because i expressed to her i was like i haven't called the nursery to come get him because he I, my anxiety has been high since i had him because they took him away from me right after i had him and I'm, i just don't feel comfortable with him being in the nursery for whatever reason i just don't feel comfortable with it so she didn't take him to the nursery she literally came and sat in the rocking chair that was like across the room and she held him she held him while I slept and I slept so good because I knew he was there in the room with me and not in the nursery like she literally sat in the rocking chair and she rocked him for like almost two hours she let me sleep for almost two it was like an hour and like 45 minutes she let me sleep for two blissful hours and because there are not people out there like that that nurse did not have to do that but she literally came into my room sat in my room and held my baby for two hours um i guess i think it was 
after her rounds and then it was her, like her lunch break. I think she did it on her lunch break because she was there for a long time. And um, in order for you to be there a long time without having to do anything, like she had to have been on her lunch break. So she basically used her lunch break to like rock my baby and make sure that he was comfortable. And he didn't cry not one time with her, like her spirit. But she was absolutely amazing. I made sure that I let the hospital know like, bitch's bomb like she uh, needs a promotion like something like uh, her name was victoria so shout outs to victoria if you ever see this video like you left a long lasting impression of me like if you ask my family like that is like the only thing that i talk about with my labor experience is you specifically because that was just amazing and you don't have too many nurses or techs um trying to do anything like that like they just trying to do their job and go home and she went over and beyond and i just want to say thank you if you're watching this like thank you so much like that was very beautiful and a very black girl sister i'm with you moment and you know we, a lot of times we don't get too many of those like as black women like we got to do that more for each other so thursday comes around they're like okay well your blood is looking really good like we're gonna be able to let y'all go home you know around six o'clock you can go home so i'm calling my husband like hey six o'clock they're saying we can come home like blah 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 so six o'clock rolls around and the nurse the one who was like oh well the baby can't stay i'm bringing my baby back um she comes in and she's like hey you know your blood cultures are coming back fine his blood cultures are coming back fine but he has one blood culture that has not come back yet and it takes 24 hours from the last time that he had it and the last time that he had it was at 7 p.m and I'm like, okay. No, they said that we were gonna go home around three o'clock. And that's when she came in and was like, oh no, like y'all not gonna be leaving until about seven o'clock. And then I called my husband and like, let him know, like be here at six so we can go ahead and get the stuff in the car, blah, blah, blah. That's how it went. And so six o'clock rolls around and that's when she's like, you know, uh, we still haven't got that blood culture back yet, but it should be here by seven because that was the last time he did it, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, okay, okay, okay. So I'm packing stuff up, packing stuff up, packing stuff up. And um, the nurse is like, oh, well you need to go ahead and do your birth certificate paperwork. And now that, you know, this hospital has a birth certificate place in the hospital, but it's shut down. So we have to do all the paperwork ourselves. And so she was like, um, me and my husband have the same last name, but I did not switch everything over. So my license still has my maiden name. So my insurance has my maiden name on it. Like a lot of stuff has my maiden name on it, even though that's not my name anymore. And so she's like, oh, well, since you came into the hospital with your maiden name, your son's name can't be your, can't be your husband's name. And I'm like, why? She was like, because you know, you're entered into the hospital under this maiden name. So um what you're gonna have to put your son's name is your name on the birth certificate and i was like no i don't like whatever i put on this fucking paper is what y'all better put on his damn birth certificate or is it, it's gonna be a problem and she's like well that's just how they're doing it i'm just letting you know that that's not gonna be his last name and i'm like whatever so whatever lady like whatever whatever so i fill out the paperwork like i normally would with his father's last name which is also my last name like i said it's it's just a technicality that my last name is not there right now. She's getting on my nerves, actually. And so I fill out the paperwork. He signs his half of the paperwork, whatever. And so, like, 7 o'clock comes. She's like, we still haven't gotten the blood culture back. And I'm like, she's like, you can't leave this hospital. Like, you can leave, but he can't leave until that blood culture comes back. So I was like, so what you're telling me is that y'all already took my son from me thinking that I had COVID. Y'all already been in and out, like taking him from me throughout this process, except for when I was trying to sleep. And now you're saying that I can't go home with my son until he gets a stupid ass blood culture back when all his other cultures have been negative. I'm not I'm confused. She's like, this is just hospital policy, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, well, I'm not leaving this hospital without him. So y'all gonna have to book me another night in a hotel hospital because I'm, I'm not leaving here without him. And so, she was like, go ahead. She was like, I'm sure it'll be fine. Don't worry about it. Just, you know. So we continue packing this stuff up. So of course, when you have a baby at this particular hospital, this is like a nicer, like where all the rich people go hospital. So everything in the room is yours. Like they give you mouthwash. They give you chapstick. They give you baby passies, bottles, um, formula, uh, bottles with the formula, like pre-made bottles with formula, uh, diapers, wipes, passies, blankets. They even let you take the pillows home you can take your covers home the sheets home whatever whatever's in that room is yours so i was like kind of folding up all the blankets that they had given us they had given us a lot of blankets so i was folding them up and like putting them in the bag and she's like oh i don't think you can take those and i'm just like 
this is not my first baby that I've had here. And yes, I can take them. She's like, I don't think that they'll let you take them. I'm like, y'all aren't going to do anything but throw these away. Because you can't use them. Y'all are not washing these. Y'all just bust open a new pack. Like, I, this is paid for by my insurance. This is already paid for. So she was trying to say that I couldn't take the blankets. I'm like, okay, why are you worried about blankets? Can you worry about, like, this blood culture that hasn't come back yet? Can you get it? Like, at this point, I'm getting irritated. I'm ready to go home. So the blood culture finally comes back. And um, the tech... Victoria, who helped me, you know, rock the baby to sleep, shows up in my room. She's like, guess what? Y'all are good to go. And I was like, thank God you came because this other nurse was like starting to piss me off a little bit. So thank God that you came. And so um, I actually hugged her and I was just like, thank you so much. Like, you are amazing. Like, you did not have to do that. And that's just, you know, you know, I thanked her, you know, in person and hugged her. And she was like, girl, I got your back. She was like, I get it. She was like, you know, we got to help each other out. Like, basically saying that the other nurse was just talking fucking crazy. Like, talking straight up crazy. Like, I don't, I think the nurse just started working there or is like a new nurse or something because all the things that she said was a lie. Like, he could have went to the nursery crying or not because that's what my insurance has already paid for. That's paid for. Like, that's what the nurses in the nursery are there for so the mom can get some rest. Um, she lied about the birth certificate. Um, when my birth certificate came for him, it had his whatever name I put on there. That's the name that was on there. So she was wrong about that. And I could have took that last little blanket that she snatched from me. Oh, yeah, she did take the blanket from me. She let me keep all the other blankets. She's like, oh, you can't take this one. And I'm just like, why? Like, what's the difference between this one and all the other fucking blankets that I'm taking or whatever? So I'm just glad that it's over. But this was basically a story just to let you guys know if you're having a baby during a pandemic it is very likely if you have a fever first of all you're gonna have to be tested for covid before you come in um even if you go into labor spontaneously they're gonna test you for covid when you go in spontaneously um if you have a fever after labor even though that would be normal in any other circumstance it is not considered normal now and you're gonna get tested again for covid um, they're going to take your baby out of the room. And you're going to be quarantined until those results come back. Thank God I went to a really, really good hospital because if I was in any other hospital, it probably would have been days before I gotten him back. And that's just being real. Um, overall, the pregnancy experience was terrible. The labor and delivery wasn't too bad, but it was kind of dramatic. For those who are probably going to ask, I could only have one person in the room. And there were no tradesies they were like whatever person you put on this paper that is it no other person can come in the room but that person like nobody else can come in the hospital so say for example like um when my dad dropped me off at the hospital he was not allowed to come in because he was not my person so he had to drop me off at the door and my husband was the only person allowed to physically come into the hospital to see me so say if my husband got into a car wreck or anything like that like there was no traces like they're like well he gonna have to get he gonna have to get better before he can come in here basically <laughs> that's basically what they were saying but if you have any like questions i might have left some stuff out which i hope because it's i hope i didn't because this was a long winded ass video but um hopefully i answered any questions you may have if you have any questions you can just leave them in the comments and i'll just respond back to you or make a an additional video but yeah um that's what it was like i just want pregnant people to be prepared you are going to be tested for covid um if you have a fever you're going to be tested again they're going to take your baby away from you you cannot get baby back until you are covid negative i guess i can show you guys him now so i'm gonna go get him and i'll come right back just hold on all right guys this is chase He's taking a little nap, guys. I kind of interrupted him, <laughs> interrupted it so he can come in here. But this is him, born with a head full of hair. He was seven pounds even, just like his one of his big sisters, and 19 inches long. Yep, just beautiful. Say hi. <laughs> He's a big baby now. But yeah, this is him. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I will see you guys in the next one.